we are on State Route 71. There's nothing significant about it other than I'm on it, riding in the desert. It basically goes from State Route 89, crosses over US 93, and ends on 60 in a north-south direction. This vlog isn't really about anything other than I'm making one. So I guess it's a vlog about nothing. you are all doing well. I'm not doing too bad. Have you heard that the National Park Service finally has populated its underwear with a set of gonads. The Park Service has reached out and told the 40-year-old going on or trying to be 20-something ladies out there, I'm sure there's some gents out there too, the Axe handle wide, cellulite encrusted, rear end, yoga pants wearing rock stackers to stop the crap. Don't stack rocks. It's destroying the nat nat natural beauty of the national parks. It's almost, and I would say it's right up there with garbage and spray paint. Somewhere along the line, someone has decided, or watched a movie, or saw someone doing it, and decided to stack rocks everywhere because it's my artistic outlet. And what's happened is, in many national parks, uh, national forests, state forests, in places of beauty where many people go, people have stacked rocks, and it's unnatural, and it looks like crap. And the National Park Service finally had enough and said, this, is, this practice is banned. Now, I don't know if they have a fine associated with it, but they have banned the practice. And they've even gone so far as to say, if you happen upon these, destroy them. Kick the crap out of them, spread the rocks around, and make it look like they were never there. Um, I really wholeheartedly pat them directly on the back. just that's a long time coming they should have done that a long time ago and I'm not talking about Cairns and I don't mean Cairns I'm sure there's a few Cairns in that crowd but the Cairns like care with an N at the end Cairn and those are stacks of rocks that mark trails or mark uh, someone's path so that they can get back and ideally you should remove them take them apart once you are done with them and they are really kind of obsolete with modern technology. GPSs and phones and such things um, should have really negated the use of um, stacking rocks for cairns unless you're lost. making this video is I was having a tough time coming up with a place to go today that wasn't too far or a subject yada 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 and you know I, I watch quite a bit of YouTube and you, know, you see folks with you know several million 
a million or a hundred thousand subscribers and you watch these random vlogs that come up in your feed and they're really about absolutely nothing so I figured I'd give my hand at making a vlog about nothing speaking of YouTube I got caught in a rabbit hole I decided to see what YouTube shorts were about uh, don't go there uh, really this is some horrendous content on there I mean just <laughs> unbelievable uh, train of unfortunate stuff randomly I mean it's just almost shows you how bizarre society has gotten over the last couple decades yeah I wouldn't suggest the practice I mean just some of the even the comedy videos on some of the things these folks it's you know there's a, a string of shorts that were supposedly comedy things and uh, the things that they were saying to their wives or wives saying to their husbands I uh, well, and uh, I don't know I suppose it's your life you do what you want but like I said it's just showing you how deteriorated society has gotten I'm no prude but I you know some of these folks are putting their wives out there for I don't know soft pornographic consumption <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, and you just, that's what 90% of it is. If you just keep scrolling through them, and I'm not even really watching them, I'm looking for something that I want to watch, and I don't see really anything on there. I know some of the channels I subscribe to pop up some stuff, but that's not their regular gig. Um, I don't know if that benefits your channel or not. I put up two or three or four or something like that, and I didn't really... You don't really get anything out of it as far as compensation or views for your channel, really. I mean, I think you're counted, they're counted separately. I think shorts and uh, full uh, subject videos are two different things, but um, I didn't see any boost in, in subscribership or really overall um, views on my regular videos. Hey, can we pick on the Harley guys for a bit? <laughs> Sometimes folks are easy targets. But these are more observations than... I'm not picking on them. But... And I've owned Harleys. And a lot of the Harley lifestyle stuff is about lifestyle and um, I was, you know, like handlebars. There's, to me, when I do something to a motorcycle, it's not necessarily for style, it's for form, it's for form and functions. It's gotta have a purpose to do it. And really, Harleys are about creating your own statement on your motorcycle visually. And handlebars are, are a major impact on that. And um, if you would, uh, one of the descriptors of handlebars that I'm talking about would be the ape hangers, the 20 inch or 24 inch or whatever way up here uh, handlebars. And it's not just ape hangers, those are like a buckhorn style. There's ones that come up straight and they're, you know, the chopper esque type bars. Um, they Not only do they not enhance performance, I don't really think they're very comfortable. Um, but I, I feel that they, they pose a danger. I know some states have actually banned them, but that's, you put your, whatever you want on your motorcycle, I don't care. That's just my opinion. However, uh, <laughs> when we see that uh, type of rider with the uh, really high handlebars and his, uh, his arms are way up here like that, uh, my wife said it looks like they're surrendering. <laughs> And to me, it looks like they're trying to dry their armpits. But, like, it's to each his own. You know, then you got the Harley Wave. Oh, man, I don't want to get into the wave thing. But, you know, the Harley Wave, though, way down here. I always think that they're pointing something in the road. It's like, what? What's in the road? Look out! I, 
hope I'm not sounding grumpy. I don't mean to sound grumpy. I'm just kind of sharing some observations. Actually, if you um, do some reading or some research, outward, outwardly grumpy people are usually the happiest. Outwardly happy people, the gigglers, the laughers, the always in a good mooders, are usually depressed. Uh, some of them, in a higher level, are in the, the manic depressive state. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. I did, did read that about, I don't know, 10 years ago. There's some type of study they did about people in the workplace and, you know, the, the grumpy guy in the corner. They went out and said, well, that grumpy guy in the corner has got to be depressed. He's got to be this or that. And they went to several locations and actually did psychological tests on they would go in and find, you know, talk to the people and who is the grumpiest person here and who's the brightest and cheeriest one. And they did a psychological comparison between these two personality types because every office has both types. You know, the, the guy in the corner, he goes in, gets his coffee. How you doing, Frank? Oh, crap. How was your weekend, Frank? It was like crap. Didn't do a damn thing. That guy is normally happier than um, Betty Birthday Cake. Um, that's, you know, smiley and cheery and giggly. She's usually the one that has the depression issues. Not uh, Friday Frank over there. <laughs> Very interesting. I just, human nature is a, uh, is an odd thing. Yeah, the only real significance this road has for me and I think the statute of limitations has run out by now, is, now this is going back 20 years or so, I had a highly modified uh, Suzuki Bandit 1200. Um, I think it's Walker Racing had cams and I did a whole, it was Street Fighter, it was a Street Fighter motorcycle, which today would be a naked bike. And my buddy had just purchased a brand new Hayabusa and we went down here and as fast as I was allowed, I allowed myself to go because I was, it was pretty scary at, at that point. As a, uh, that's probably the fastest I went on a motorcycle, about a, uh, 165 miles an hour. There was, there was no, this is a very little traveled road, unlike today, um, especially if you're early in the morning. There's times of the day when there's like zero people out here. I mean, between 20 years ago and now, um, something like uh, two or three million people have moved to Arizona. So more of these old, lonely, distant, uh, desolate roads uh, have been uh, really overpopulated. But the day we were out here, there was zero people out here. And, we're seeing whose bike was faster and definitely the Hayabusa was pretty darn fast. I don't know what you guys are getting on the camera in this video, but th this road is, the road is very uninteresting, dead straight. Um, the scenery is, is not as bland as I had once envisioned. There's some pretty nice little hills back and forth here, uh, nice desert scenery. And that gray mountain range way out in the distance, those largest mountains out there is the Harquahalla Range, or at least Harquahalla Peak is out there. I believe it's the Harquahalla Range. And the, the tallest elevation is around 6,000 feet. But that's like a good 25 or 30 miles away anyway. So I've been meaning to make a video on personal locator beacons. That's not an announcement. I just had seen a video recently uh, that 
kind of made it all more poignant to try to at least educate people on personal locator beacons. And this video that came up in my suggested videos, uh, this woman who has a hiking channel, and she's, I think she's got like a million viewers or more, so she's an influencer, I guess you would say, and she knows nothing about backwoods, off-grid, whatever you want to call it, bushcrafting, hiking. Um, to, in my opinion, she was a dullard, and all these people were watching her, getting information from her. And oh my gosh, to the point that she put up a video that said, what happens when you press your SOS button? I watch every one of those that I can. I want to get as much information so that I know what happens when you push the SOS button. Well, this woman was so horribly unprepared and one of those people that I had mentioned earlier, um, yoga pants wearing hiker. She wears yoga pants and a yoga shirt to go on a 12 mile hike. I guess it's comfortable, but I can't imagine to me, if you're going out in the backcountry, you want to have significant clothing on. Stuff that's going to hand up, hold up to the elements, especially if you get lost. Well, this particular woman was having some type of chest pains or something like that. And she knew nothing about her personal locator beacon. So, modern personal locator beacons, the current generation of them, you can text out. And she pushes the, the SOS button and then starts her uh, a Facebook barrage of text to everyone she knows about how much of a predicament she's in and all this stuff. So she's doing this and, and the um, texting over satellite when you use a personal locator beacon um, is imperfect and takes a long time. So she's communicating like it's Facebook with all of her friends and stuff and emergency services and well actually the service, the personal locator beacon service is trying to get a hold of her and find out what her situation is. And they could not. And they contacted her mother who she never told was her emergency contact. So when you set up your personal locator beacon, you have an emergency contact. Anytime you push that button, they call them directly and start getting information about you, health information and stuff like that. This is a very important part of it. She had not done that. And her mother gets this call that your daughter is in some type of um, situation. She has pushed her emergency locator button um, and sounded the SOS and we are sending out um, emergency rescue services. Do you know anything about her health situation? Do you know what, where she was going and what she was wearing and things like that? Oh my gosh! I mean, that's that's like 101. She did not do that. In her kit to go hiking, she's wearing this yoga out to signal emergency services with. She's got, she said, they asked her what she was wearing and, and does she have anything that she can flash to other than her chest <laughs> to notify the oncoming helicopter. And she says, well, I'm wearing a blue top and gray yoga pants. What? She has no way of signaling anything, not a flashlight. I assume she has a flash, she had to have a flashlight. But you know, this is a daytime rescue operation. She has nothing bright colored in her backpack or anything. She has no backup stuff, zero. Uh, you know, and she's she is a influencer in the hiking and off-grid camping genre. I, I just mind the whole thing was the whole video was mind blowing. So then she thinks all this stuff is free. I read somewhere that, you know, helicopter rides are zero cost. And this hospital visit, well, let's go, the hospital, you know, this helicopter ride is zero cost. Well, no, it was $60,000.
Now, she forgot she signed up for Geos. Now, I've got to do some research on this myself. I was under the impression that Geos, um, when you press the button and you have Geos, they send out Geo services so that it doesn't cost you anything. If Geos can't do that, they send out search and rescue from whatever state, county, or local organization uh, to come and rescue you, and then they cover that cost. Luckily, she did, she didn't even remember she had it, but five years ago when she signed up for her personal locator beacon, she did the smart thing and purchased the Geos insurance. Now what, um, she had an inReach, which is Garmin. What Garmin did is they split it. Um, so if you had originally purchased it, it was, had $100,000 coverage. If you did not um, sign up when they split it, they had a $50,000 and $100,000 coverage. One's 24 and one's 39. I don't know why anybody would not pay $39 a year for $100,000 worth of coverage, but she got the default of, of $50,000, so now she owes $9,000 for her helicopter ride. Ugh. No, plan, no, no planning, no forethought, no, she's got this device, this powerful tool, and she knows nothing about it other than, oh, I'm safe, I can just press the button. And, and now, so aside from the personal locator beacon thing, she's going on this trip, and she knows she has a little bit of a health issue before she goes, <clears throat> and she ended one healthcare plan and started the other one. She knew it wasn't going to start for another month. So now she's got a $50,000 um, emergency room doctor bill <laughs> because she didn't plan for her insurance. I mean, it, it, even at the minimum, if you're going out hiking on a 12, 15, 20, or a thousand mile um, hiking excursion, you have a good chance of either getting sick, mechanical injury, or something happening to you where you're going to need uh, medical care. Even if it's a gap insurance or something like that, it would be worth every dime to that. She did nothing about that. I mean, just talk about absolutely freaking clueless. I, unbelievable that this person's an influencer and knows so little. But anyway, I prattle on. Well, we're coming up to the end of this road and the end of this video. We're going to jump out on US 60 here. Um, I appreciate you watching my video about nothing. Please comment, subscribe, ding that bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. Like and share. Adios.